You know, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk tonight about the tail end of the Hammer Studios. And this one, Frankenstein, the monster from hell, had a lot of interest because Peter Cushing and David Prowse were in it long before Star Wars became a big hit. Now, this came out in 1974, directed by Terrence Fisher and produced by Hammer. Uh, Cushing, Shane Briant, and Prowse appeared. Filmed at Elstree Studios in 1972, but not released until 74. It was the final chapter in the Hammer Frankenstein saga of films, as well as director Fisher's last film. The film was officially released on UK DVD plus Blu-ray on the 28th of April 2014, with all previously censored scenes restored to the film because of gore and uh, what do you call creeping horror. Written by John Elder and produced by Roy Skeggs. Cinematography by Brian Proben. Edited by James Needs. Music by James Bernard. Distributed by Avco Embassy, which is at the time the uh, what do you call the financial company, also the sponsor of the Avco Cup and Paramount Pictures. Released 2nd of May, 99 minutes, budget of 137,000 pounds, with 90,000 admissions in France, where it was a, a big hit. Now, this one Baron Victor Frankenstein, having survived the fire at the end of the previous film, lives and works in the insane asylum as a surgeon and is given a number of privileges as he holds incriminating evidence on Adolf Klaus, the asylum's corrupt and perverted director. Frankenstein, using the alias of Dr. Carl Victor, uses his position to continue his experiments in the creation of man. Now, when Simon Helder, a young doctor and admirer of Frankenstein's work, arrives as an inmate for the crimes of sorcery and body snatching, the Baron is impressed by Helder's talents and takes him under his wing as an apprentice. Together, they work and design for a new creature. Unknown to Simon, however, Frankenstein is acquiring body parts by murdering his patients. Now, Frankenstein's new experiment is a hulking ape-like Herr Schneider, a homicidal inmate whom he has kept alive after a violent suicide attempt and on whom he grafted the hands of a recently deceased sculptor. Since Frankenstein's hands were badly burned in the fire, all shabby stitch work must be done by Sarah, a beautiful mute girl who assists the doctor and who was nicknamed Angel. Simon tells Frankenstein that he is a surgeon and the problem is solved. Frankenstein reveals that Sarah is Klaus's daughter and has been mute ever since he tried to rape her. Soon new eyes and a new brain are given to the creature. Very good scenes, by the way. When the monster lumbering her, her suit and mute is complete, it becomes better and intent on revenge. It ultimately embarks on a killing spree in the asylum, with Klaus as one of his victims. Eventually, it is fully overpowered and destroyed by a mob of inmates. Simon is devastated by the loss of life and reports to Frankenstein. However, the Baron feels that it was the best that could happen to such a creature and is already considering a new experiment with other involuntary donors. Simon and Sarah watch silently as Frankenstein starts tying up the laboratory while pondering what could be first to uh, donate. Now, why the, the movie works in all different aspects is because it's a hammer and having Peter Cushion as Frankenstein really works. Now, a mostly British uh, cast, but uh, Clifford Mollison as a judge is quite good, and also uh, Patrick uh, Troughton as the body snatcher. Now, this was the sixth and last time that Peter Cushing portrayed the role of Frankenstein, a party originated in 57 as the curse of Frankenstein. Cushing had long been known throughout his career for his meticulous attention to uh, detail, uh, even in the planned handling and usage of props. For this film, he helped to design the wig that he wore, but years afterward regretted the outcome and apparently quipped that it made him look like the American stage and screen star, Helen Hayes. Cushing's dedication to the role was never truly dampened. However, even at the age of 59 and in poor health, he still insisted upon forming a stunt, which required him to leap from a tabletop onto the Hulk and creature's back, spinning wildly in circles to subdue the monster, gone amok with a sedative. Apart from an uncredited cameo, a cameo in the 67 James Bond spoof Casino Royale, Prowse made his second appearance as a Frankenstein laboratory creation in this film, his first having been in the horror of Frankenstein. He is the only actor who played a Hammer Frankenstein monster more than once. During the DVD commentary session for this movie, Prowse said that his daily transformation into the monster from hell went fairly quickly, being able to suit up and pull on the mask in only about 30 minutes, where asked his time in a makeup chair for his previous Hammer monster role typically required several tedious hours. Of course, Prowse and Cushing later co-starred in the 77 Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope as Darth Vader and the... Uh, uh, Grand Moff Tarkin, respectively. Now, Frankenstein, the monster from hell, has received uh, mixed reviews from uh, from critics. On the f- uh, of the film, The Hammer Story, the authorized history of Hammer films, 
uh, Taren, uh, wrote, Terence Fisher's haunting melancholy swan song would be an epitaph for Hammer Moore Horror itself. Time Out wrote, Fisher's last film is a disappointment. Now, for me, it was quite effective, especially with the concept of turning Frankenstein on its head, getting more people involved just than Victor Frankenstein. The film itself had performed poorly at the box office. It was released in certain markets as a double feature with another Hammer film, the failed Captain Kronos Vampire Hunter, which was supposed to be uh, a sequel bait, but it never uh, came about. I'll be talking about that in a future podcast. So if you can find Frankenstein and uh, Frankenstein in the monster from hell, very effective poster, but to call Frankenstein a monster from hell could be inaccurate. He was never a hellish creature. He was a creature to be pitied because other people were keeping alive against his, uh, what it called against his will. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing with our Hammer podcast, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.